In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We saw last time some of the errors of modernism condemned by Pius X in his encyclical Lamentabili Sanis. And error number 65 was the kind of the summation of all of it, uh, the attempt by the modernists, or the desire, the goal, to turn Catholicism into a, just another Protestantism, a broad and liberal Protestantism. And this is the, the, the ultimate goal of the modernists, is to turn the Catholic Church from a dogmatic Christianity into a non-dogmatic one, to make it Protestant. And it would be good to note that there, there are 65 of these errors, 65 heretical propositions that's the, that forms modernism. Just by sheer volume, that's a serious problem in the church. And as, as we will see, it's, it's everywhere. But to point to any single cause, even modernism itself, would be uh, an oversimplification. Um, so a helpful way to look at modernism in light of all the problems in the church today, the homosexual clergy, the tolerance of it, abuse of power. Uh, modernism is the trunk, and all these other problems are the fruit, the branches, and the roots are Satan. And if we would consider this, this, this noxious tree, uh, Satan is pushing his evil, poisonous sap up into the church through the trunk of modernism and into all these other uh, branches of the church. And it's producing evil fruit. So modernism is that, that environment that allows Satan to spread his, his evils everywhere, and homosexuality and so on. Now this, this poisonous environment created by modernism is, is there's really two kind of sides of the coin. It is on the one hand, there's an attitude of doubt towards the magisterium of the church, a doubt of traditions of the past, doubt about dogmas and truth. Uh, and on the other hand, there's an attitude of superiority towards progress and modern science. These are what are held to be practically infallible by the modernist, whereas anything the church taught before should automatically be held in suspicion. Right, the teachings of the church from the past, they're outdated, they're irrelevant, especially considering the latest scientific discoveries and modern advances, etc. It's a line we hear from the modernists. So the, 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 the fundamental principle which allows this doubt towards the faith, doubt towards the magisterium, uh, comes from something called vital imminence. Now this is the idea of this principle that God built into everyone an internal desire for himself, uh, an internal desire for God, a search for the infinite, and it is from this internal built-in desire that all these different religions come out, not just Catholicism or Christianity, but Buddhism, paganism, uh, whatever, whatever. It all comes from the same source from deep within, vital imminence. Well, there's actually some truth to that. It is true that God built into mankind a natural desire for him and a natural, in some sense, a, a kind of a dark and murky knowledge that there is a God out there, a supreme being. But the extreme error is taking this to mean that because God put that sense in man, anything which comes out is valid and good. Any religion is just the same as any other. Christian, Protestant, pagan, whatever. So the, those the St. Paul, the apostles, the fathers of the church, uh, they weren't receiving external divine uh, um, uh, inspiration. It was internal. They were just giving expression to their feelings from within, and then they put them onto an external historical figure, Jesus Christ. He really wasn't all those things in reality, historical reality, but he was all those things in religious reality. It's a modernist way of saying everything the Catholic Church teaches is a lie. So this, this principle of vital eminence, this was really the offshoot of Protestantism, right? Protestantism denies an externally visible church hierarchy and says that truth comes from within. Just read the Bible for yourself and the Holy Ghost will inspire you from within. So vital eminence is kind of a, a derivation of that, a, 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 a offshoot. 
Uh, even though, of course, they didn't, Martin Luther himself, the other leading uh, Protestant revolutionaries, didn't intend for that to happen, it's the natural consequence. But of the two, modernism and Protestantism, uh, modernism is way worse. Because at least Protestants have the decency to leave the church. The Protestant has his doctrine, and he's clear about it. He's clear, this is what we believe, it's opposed to the church, this is what you should believe, and we're leaving and we're taking our doctrine with us. Thanks be to God. The modernist doesn't want you to know his doctrine. He hides it. And he stays within the church. The modernist is not interested in teaching you the truth because he doubts that himself. All he wants to do is to destroy your belief in the truth, is to remove from your head the idea that there is truth. There's whatever. But he won't tell you that directly. They stay in the church and they sow an attitude and an environment of doubt. And modernism, in this sense, hands Satan a double victory in that it systematizes mortal sin. The, the, the foundational principles of modernism are, are all mortal sins. A doubt of the faith, doubt of the church, disbelief in the actual resurrection of Christ. And this is where modernism begins. This is the start and they go from there. And yet they stay in the church. Modernist priest, bishop, laity, every single week, sometimes every single day, reception of Holy Communion. It's another sacrilege, another sacrilege, another sacrilege. And all the while, the modernist convinces himself he's Catholic. And that really is, it's really insidious, is the modernism will destroy your Catholic faith without you knowing about it. Right? A person, they, they think they're Catholic. I can be a good Catholic, and et cetera, et cetera. And that's why we get the results of all these, these surveys out there. 70% of Catholics think they can, you know, whatever, use contraception and still be a good Catholic. Not go to Mass on Sunday, still be a good Catholic. Have an abortion, still be a good Catholic. That's a result of modernism. So modernism, in addition to casting doubt, sowing doubt upon the faith, elevates the reason of man over the faith of the church. Right? Even if there wasn't this doubt of the church, reason would be elevated above it. Modern science, whatever. So when you have a strong, consistent church teaching or church tradition about faith, theology, the Bible, science, whatever, uh, theologians, biblical scholars, historians, even atheist scientists... If they say something different based on their research, they want to say that don't believe what the church says, believe what we say. But God speaks through his church. God speaks through the ministers he himself placed in charge. And modernism disbelieves that. It puts man over God, man's word over God's word. And that's just like Satan wanted to put himself over God. And Satan is reliving his rebellion against God every time a modernist tells someone to doubt a teaching of the church. Hmm. So this elevation of reason and science over the, the faith of the church, uh, that's the contribution of the Freemasons, right? The Enlightenment, the extreme elevation of that reason over faith. And, and they had been fighting to get their evil ideas into the heads of people for a century. And their trouble was, uh, you know, these Catholics... They won't listen to what we say. They listen to their priests and not us. So how can we listen, get them to listen to us if we become priests? And that's how that happened, right? How did these theologians and biblical scholars get there? That started hundreds of years ago with infiltrators. And they knew what they were doing. They wanted to destroy the church. Now, Satan is the mastermind behind that. Satan was the coordinator and the, the author of all this, this infiltration, you know, 100, 200 years ago. But these days, the modernists nowadays, they, they wouldn't even believe that, right? They, they're not trying to infiltrate the church. They're already there. The reason they're modernists is that their seminary professors were modernists, and then they had these other theologians before them and so on. Right? They don't know who their father is, Satan, or that their beliefs are the worst virus the church has, has ever known. Right? They're, they're, they're not, these modernists nowadays are not consciously, well, maybe some are, trying to destroy the church. They just think, well, it's reasonable. This is a progression. This is the way it should be. The 
Modernism is that perfect virus of Satan against the church, a combination of all those errors of the past 500 years that were fighting against the church, trying to attack the church from the outside, and now they're all combined and they're inside the church herself. Modernism is a deadly cocktail mix injected into the veins of the church, into the heart of the bride of Christ. Modernism has been pumping through their veins of Christ's body for decades, poisoning the faithful. That's why we see statistically these 90% losses in the church. 70% of Catholics thinking you can disagree with the church teaching and still be a good Catholic. 50,000 seminarians before Vatican II, 5,000 afterward. Right? Millions and millions of people leaving the church. And people like to blame Vatican II as the source of all these, these evils. Right? They like to blame the new mass, the documents of Vatican II. Uh, you know, regardless, that, that's, that's not really accurate. Right? It wasn't so much Vatican II as it was modernism at Vatican II. Vatican Council can be considered the source of our problems in the church today, like the end of a needle is the source of the poison. The needle itself isn't good or bad, it's just a method of entry. What's being injected? Antivirus, a remedy, or venom? That's what happened to Vatican II. That's where the modernists made their strike, made their power play, and they were successful. That's why Paul VI said the smoke of Satan has entered the church, and John XXIII said he wished he'd never called the council. So whether you like or hate Vatican II or the documents of the new mass, you put modernism onto anything, it's going to get ruined. So modernism is the worst and most dangerous enemy because it attacks the church from within. And the modernist, as we've seen the past 70 years, uh, disguises heresy as orthodoxy, promotes that which will destroy the faith as though it would promote it. And even after millions and millions of souls are lost, the modernist continues to preach modernism as the answer. Because he doesn't really care, right? But even those who do care, who do, who are swept up along with this modernism, uh, they still believe it, despite all evidence to the contrary. So, in, in the modernist mind, you know, why, he, why this, this is allowed is he, that there are decent modernists who do want to help people, this altruistic uh, humanism, we could say. That's really the, the, the modernist attitude, is that he's helping people by freeing them from the antiquated, superstitious beliefs of this tired, old human institution called the church. Right? That's what the modernist is doing. In the modernist mind, we're the simpletons. We're the fools. We're the ones who need to be saved to the modernist. We're the idiots. Right? There's no such thing as hell or mortal sin or God, maybe, or whatever. But tomorrow, uh, we'll see some more of the errors and problems of modernism and some of the consequences of it. So we'll return, return to this tomorrow. God bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.